Welcome to One Soul Radio, an interactive conscious conversation grounded in psychology and inspired by spirit with Steve Hassenberg and Kelly Alpert. Hello, friends, and welcome to One Soul Radio here on Unity Online Radio. This is the show for you and by you, a virtual community creating conscious conversation and the opportunity to have a place to delve a little deeper in life than you may do on your own. We hope to offer you a unique perspective from both the psychological and spiritual world at the same time. My name is Callie Alpert here in the central Hudson Valley with a soundtrack of a cacophony of geese behind me out my front or side door here, which you're probably going to hear. And I'm here with my dear friend, co-host and spiritual psychotherapist, Steve Hassenberg. Well, it's hard to match the cacophony of geese, (laughs) but I have a cacophony of lawnmowers. Oh, good. Okay. Well then we, you know, we represent the (laughs) pre-industrial and post-industrial age. I don't know. Uh, we, re- yeah. we represent two coasts, one of which is very warm with grass still growing. Oh. And another is very cold. So the geese are in the lake, which is partially frozen from what I see. And it's a gorgeous view. And it's definitely, it's a whole scene. It's, it's a whole right. thing. I just came, I was gone for a while. I came back up here to this, and I do live um, on this beautiful lake, and I've never seen anything like it. Wow. Hundreds and hundreds. It's it's a whole Nat Geo experience that I'm witnessing every day now. It's wild. I could talk about that all show, but we won't. So today we're going to revisit the idea of uh, what COVID has taught us. We actually launched this show just about a year ago, a little more than a year ago. And now that we're well like we're almost two years into this unprecedented pandemic we wanted to do a refresher on what COVID has taught us some of the helpful lessons coming out of this challenging and surreal time so COVID has forced a global timeout upon every human being at the same time like really truly unprecedented asking us to go inside to dig deep to assess our true priorities, to make authentic decisions, consolidate our lives, re-examine consumerism, honor nature, face our mortality around, uh, among other very important issues. So today we're going to analyze our experiences during this time of COVID, share our stories of awakening, and offer steps that translate our universal pandemic experiences into life lessons from which we ben- we can benefit and hope that you can benefit every day. Um, and the one thing that I want to say, too, is I'm just getting over COVID. I still don't know where I got it, but Omicron is a pretty virulent little bug. I know where you got it, Callie. Where do you think I got it? They have just uh, made the Bahamas <laughs> off limits to U.S. citizens. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that true or not? Yeah. Are you pl- yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. All right. Well, that's I'll have to Happen read it. This- happened this morning oh okay well steve knows that was uh i i checked myself into an ashram (laughs) for my christmas holiday which was a beautiful experience and i need to say they were super prudent there and there wasn't any COVID to anybody's knowledge like constant tests and major prudence both you know with the international borders the airports and the actual place where i was so it must it happened after i left there um but that to say, um, you know, as somebody who has, we've all, for one reason, or I guess in one way or another, taken major precautions to whatever degree it jibes for us and related or not related to our different um, opinions on vaccines and boosters or lack thereof. So we're not here to really talk too much about that, although it may come up organically. Um, But I feel very blessed that as much as it's been very persistent and I still have symptoms after two plus weeks, um, it never really impacted me that deeply. It's been very mild and so I feel very lucky um, about that. But the point is, is the timing of talking about this while it's, you know, still been impacting my body a little bit, even though it's, I've been clear now for at least a week, um, is sort of serendipitous timing. It's not what informed our decision to do the show. So here we are. where are you with the whole idea before we get into some of the specifics? Where are you with 
this topic these days well, in your family listen, and your COVID household? COVID has <laughs> impacted all of us. Yeah. And um, at the very moment, I've got a number of clients whose children have COVID or, and who have given it to them or they know people who have, well, now it's called uh, Omicron and they have the Omicron virus. And really the good news about it is it seems like it's much milder. It is, it's true. So for everybody who's gotten it, aside from one person I know who wasn't vaccinated, it's been mild. So thank God for that. Yeah. So I'm in touch with it every single day. Yeah, right. In, in one way or another, right? Right. And certainly over the last couple of years, I've known people who have died from it mm -hmm. unexpectedly and, mm -hmm. you know, wound up in hospitals. So it's had an extremely powerful impact on me just on the level of health let alone all the other impacts it's had that we're going to be talking about today. Mm -hmm. So first of all, um, I think it's important. I, I, when COVID first struck, um, I had just started my current job. I had just moved up to where I'm living right now to work at Omega Institute up in the Hudson Valley, um, the Holistic Studies Institute and Elizabeth Lesser the inimitable co-founder when talking about co covid once fleetingly called it um shaman covid which i thought was very profound and it stuck with me because that suggests that there is something way bigger going on and something that's that we're here that's that's here to teach us something and that's in no way to mitigate or minimize all the pain and suffering that lots of people have gone through all around the globe um, but we're here to talk about it through our lens so the, the more overarching question is, what is it here to teach us and what have we learned? Um, and like I said in the intro, we've talked about this, it's almost like every person on the planet has been forced to have a time out, a real quiet break from your traditional day, break from your habits and your routines and all kinds of things that none of us were expecting. and certainly many people still aren't very happy about. Um, well, let me just footnote this by saying, yeah, the idea of a timeout came from one of my clients. Uh, oh, that's right. Okay, tell me. Who said, uh, you know, <laughs> I keep giving my kid timeouts. He goes to his room and he stays there for a while. And what he's supposed to do is figure out a better way of behaving. Mm. And he said, whoa, wait a minute. That's what we're supposed to figure out. Mm. That's what COVID was about. Just go to your room and figure out a better way to live. Mm. So powerful. Such a yeah. great, it is, it's such a great metaphor. So what we're going to do is um, just go through um, some of the noteworthy lessons and topics that we've either witnessed or experienced ourselves. Starting with fear of the unknown and how COVID certainly pushed forth this concept, the fear of the unknown, the fact that um, everything that we ha had known before the beginning of 2020 got completely ripped to shreds before our eyes in no time with no frame of reference for m most of us as to how to handle that, right? Control is such a big part of most of our lives. It's, it's a huge part of our societal structure, our desire, our um, aspiration to be quote unquote in control and have our check boxes, our, our checklist checked, right? And also dreams, mm -hmm. right? We're always dreaming about a better life ahead. And we make plans and we manifest and we read self-help books <laughs> and all, and, and what happened was there is no future. What happened to my future? What happened to my new job, my new car, the possibility of my new girlfriend? What happened to the new restaurant I was going to go to? Mm -hmm. All of that got shut down. Mm -hmm. 
very difficult stuff for us yeah and it really forced us it's it's almost like a collective dark night of the soul which every one of we humans experiences when everything that you know in your own personal created like infrastructure blows up and you're and and all the things that we thought were parts of our identity are suddenly gone and we've all experienced this to very different degrees some people have been way more immune some people have been um, way more um, subjected to you know pain and suffering large stories in the news personal issues that people have gone through but to one degree or another it's shown us all that we really don't know squat right and that it's blown up everything that we've known about ourselves and, and we so, don't have much control so what does that teach us what, what does do it do teach that? us yeah. well what we're going to talk about today is that and I, this is my experience, both with myself and my clients, the individuals who had the ability to adapt. And adaptation means letting go of what you've known and stepping into the unknown. So the individuals who have had that ability to adapt have done pretty damn well. Mm -hmm. The individuals that have a hard time adapting have done pretty badly. So we're going to be talking about that stuff. And that's also a, um, a reflection of our attachments, mm -hmm. right? That kind of is connected to adaptability, isn't it? Yes. Or uh, the different, uh, the ability we have to adapt if we're more attached versus less, adapt, um, less attached, if we're able to roll with the punches and kind of go with the flow as it were versus not. It makes it easier to adapt. Um, yeah, I'm sure you've seen all colors of the rainbow. I have. To, um, yeah, in the last two, two years especially, right? Have you noticed that the storylines have changed with your clients in the last two years? Or have they magnified or? Oh, absolutely. Um, especially with the people with children. Mm. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. The clients with children. <laughs> The clients whose children were supposed to be at school mm -hmm. and are at home and they don't have friends because everybody is possible suspect. These people have gone through the most difficult two years of their lives. Yeah, I've heard that from a lot of friends with kids. And some have adapted. Many have not. It's like, could you please open the schools? I don't know what I would have done when my kids were younger. It would have been, <laughs> would have been hell. <laughs> Hats off. Hats off to right? parents out there, especially right? if your children have been at home. Yeah. Um, so that's the that's first one. The fear of the unknown. That's one of the biggest um, uh, issues that's sort of been magnified through COVID. And, you know, we po point these out just again to kind of um, just place a, just highlight them so that we can pay attention to them and sort of ground our experiences, which we think might be helpful because it's so easy to get lost in what's still going on with this pandemic and our lifestyles and how they've changed. The second thing that we've noted is that it's forced us to stop, just come to a complete halt, to be still, um, which is not something that we're conditioned to do. And we're so accustomed to having our routines to doing versus being, which is a big part of any spiritual practice. So this was, again, more of a magnifier, which I think is what COVID was on a lot of levels. I think it was a magnifier of all kinds of shadow human behaviors that exist in small and, and maybe mm -hmm. bigger ways anyway. And this has just magnified everything, amplified it. Yeah. Um, but it's kept us in check and it's precluded us from having the same amount of distractions. <coughs> Pardon me. That's my, my meta as I cough with my, the residual of my, my own COVID experience talking about COVID. That um, is COVID speaking right now. It is. Wants to uh, talk to everybody. Well, may it not for too long. <laughs> and may nobody else have to hear it in their own households either. Um, but anyway, the idea of stopping and, and just really, again, getting more in touch with the fact that we, our lives have gotten smaller if you define your life by the things you do and what happens outside of your household. Can we, <laughs> it's a great moment for Henry David Thoreau. Mm -hmm. So Thoreau said, I've traveled great distances this summer and I've never left Walden. Mm-hmm. 
And so uh, that is also the has been the possibility with COVID. Meaning you're staying inside, but you're opening up your insides for further explanation, uh, exploration, mm -hmm. and traveling and learning, learning new things, learning about the people you live with, treating people differently, reaching out to friends who you can't see anymore. All kinds of wonderful opportunities have come up because we've had to stop. And learning about ourselves, sort of to the bigger so point of what you were saying, right? And this is something, you know, I moved up, as I said earlier, to the place where I'm currently living six weeks before lockdown, not knowing anybody in the area and starting a brand new job and living in um, a beautiful location um, and a relatively small space alone. And um, so I didn't have any sense of tribe up here or anybody to have in a bubble. And I was just living in my own little bubble here. And um, it was really, really hard on so many levels. And we'll get a little bit more to like the single person thing too, because versus relationships, because there's so many different perspectives on that as well. But there was so little, my life has been so small during the winter, especially in the Northeast, during a pandemic, when you're new to an area and where I am happens to be sort of secluded. I'm, you know, the nearest town is almost 20 minutes away. So all those things combined, I really didn't find that I had that many choices except to turn inward. It's not like I decided to take up, you know, sourdough bread baking and basket weaving and painting and all these things that I fancy doing, but I didn't feel inspired to do. And what I did naturally feel more inspired to do is deepen my practice, almost out of necessity because it was really, I needed it so badly. And I've realized as I continue forward that um, it's something that we always need deeply, but that COVID definitely forced my hand to deepen it in a way that I might not have otherwise. Absolutely. So it's interesting, the world, our world on the inside is actually a much more vast world than the world on the outside is. It can be for sure, mm -hmm. right? But I, you know, a lot of people, because we've been such a distracted culture, right? because we've been so attached or addicted to consuming, very difficult when an emergency, a global health pandemic falls upon us to change that kind of outward momentum and become inward, become still, start to meditate, do yoga. That is a big, big and difficult proposition for people. But I think the people who have thrived the most took that up and really got into it like you did. I still don't know. My verdict's still out. I mean, I know it's always beneficial, but I can't tell you that I'm, you know, um, dancing in invisible rainbows every day coming out of it, you know, or having maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe I am in ways that I don't even recognize. I don't know. I see rainbows around you right now. Oh, good. I'm so glad. <laughs> Thank you for validating that. Appreciate that. Um, one of the other things that, um, as you alluded to just a little bit ago, is <clears throat> the idea of being more present with whoever you're with. So if you're with yourself or your family, your lover, your partner, your children, your God, your animals, people talk a lot about how their, you know, their animals got a lot more love because they got really happy and conditioned to having their human parents at home more regularly. Um, I know for me, I, um, I'm very close with my sister as it is, but we, as a, early on as a means of escaping, as we live almost two hours apart from each other now, um, we're seeing each other probably more often than we did when we were living within 45 minutes of each other because we would make these dates to meet in the middle of our locations and go hiking, um, you know, meeting in the woods and just having these beautiful days and picnics, you know, out in the, out in the woods. And it was extremely meaningful. We do a shout out to the animals. Yes, please because do. Because one of the great things that happened during COVID is that the shelters, and I mean nationally, were cleared yeah. out. Mm -hmm. That you could not get a dog, you could not get a cat, you might be able to get a gerbil, but <laughs> dogs and cats were impossible to get. 
And so what happened was the animals all of a sudden became so important. And you know, I love animals. Yes. They became so important to be companions, especially for people who were alone. The, our furry friends became our best friends and companions during COVID. The shelters are still cleared out by and large. Yeah, it's um, that's really true. And it's such a beautiful, again, like why it took a global pandemic to get people to adopt even more. But again, they, they had the headspace or they were home more often. It's part of the reason I haven't had an animal on my own in a really long time is because of the commitment of having to be present enough for them. So right. these there are a lot of gifts that come from these things if we look at it through a certain lens. And that's definitely one of them. And on the on the um, the note of animals, we can give another shout out to our favorite animal documentary from Sir Richard At Attenborough called the David Day Attenborough. That Right. Oh, what did I say, Richard? I'm sorry. The day the earth changed? The year that earth changed. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> but yes, beautiful, beautiful documentary about the way the entire animal kingdom across the globe changed significantly for the better within weeks and months of COVID really striking. I mean, it's such a powerful, beautiful, feel-good documentary that's easy to find online. So shout out to that. Um, what else did you want to say about the idea of like being more present with who you're with? I know you, oh, you were touched by your, what you saw in your neighborhood. Uh, yeah, this is something that I talked about a year ago, or maybe when we, we even talked about it on our podcast before we began our radio show. We did. And, uh, I said that in my neighborhood, I rarely saw men playing with their children. I just saw nannies. <laughs> I live in a nanny neighborhood in a way. I was going to say it might be, that might be part of, my, part of it might be the neighborhood too. I definitely live in a nanny neighborhood. <laughs> and a, a, a few weeks after COVID hit and people were not allowed back to their offices and back to the stock market, um, I saw all these men. I, I was really, Kelly, I was shocked. I was happy. Men were outside playing soccer and basketball and baseball and Frisbee. And it was like, where did all these guys come from? I didn't <laughs> even know they existed. You thought it was a women only neighborhood except for you? Yeah, I really did. And um, I was really pleased to see that. And I know that it went on for a bit of time. It probably wore off, but it was a beautiful beginning of something. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, um, as I, as we go forward through this list, the, again, one of the bigger themes that's coming up for me that is probably a little more on the far outside, but as we talk about COVID as a teacher is just to, we invite you all as we go through these little, these that more of the specifics is to think of the overarching larger picture of this you know where in the world and who was it and why did something infiltrate our entire lives seemingly overnight separate from the politics of how you think it originated and where to illuminate these things for us and through deep deep pain and suffering um it's just an interesting question to ask it really is you know it's you so and i it yeah. really, really is such an interesting question. Yeah, um, because it's magnificent and wild and just so large and so incomprehensible that, you know, since it's just my, my conditioning is to think of things from that perspective often, um, the spiritual perspective in addition to how it impacts me and my earthly heart every day. And it's just as we're kind of looking back on this, because I haven't thought about a lot of this in a while, it's, it's fascinating. It's really and very, it, very powerful. You know, it, it caused a lot of pain and suffering. Deeply. It caused a lot of unemployment. It caused a lot of people on the front lines to be exhausted beyond measure. It's caused people to begin to hate one another, whether they're vaxxed or unvaxxed. It brought up, it, it seems as you're talking about it, it seems to have brought up everything that we have needed to face. 
as a culture, as a globe, and depending on how we face it will determine how we go forward. Yeah, you're, is there anything it didn't, it hasn't asked us to face? No. I can't name one thing. Right. What, what part of human nature, what part of our earthly existence, what part of society, what part of our human conditioning, what part of our infrastructures has not been questioned and illuminated from this pandemic i really I can't name one thing it's an interesting question right right not one thing no it's really something so we're talking about what COVID has taught us we're trying to, to um, kind of look at it through the lens of the lessons that we can have learned and need to remember and continue to learn um, so we've talked about a variety of different versions of lessons from who you're with, relationships, being forced to stop and make a relationship with stillness. When we come back, we're going to continue um, talking about the lessons that COVID has taught us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to One Soul Radio here on Unity Online Radio. We are talking about how, what COVID has taught us and we've gone through some of the lessons that we hope we can sort of remind all of us collectively about so that we can just have a different perspective and we're not sinking into the COVID K-hole through one more winter as we continue to endure this. I just made that up. Um, it's just a metaphor for, you know, being in a dark, I got it. inert COVID kind of place. Um, so let's see, we've talked about being still, we've talked about being forced to stop, and yes, you in the in the front. You know what's coming up for me? What? You mentioned the word dark night of the soul. Yeah. And some people might not know what that means. Oh, okay. Do you wanna do you wanna explain it? Yeah. Mr. So Campbell? I'm gonna I'm gonna practice my German, which I usually don't do with you. Uh oh. Ready? Yes. Valpurgis Nick. That means dark night of the soul. It came from the German. And it had to do, it, it doesn't sound, it's bad. It's like it takes us to the bottom. It takes each individual to a place that they have refused to go to. Because it says dark night of the soul. So it takes somebody to a place that is very profound for their growth, for their healing. And because of that, it becomes a dark night. They're surrounded by it, they're in a cave, but there are opportunities in that dark night to find the light that's coming into that cave and to seek the light and to heal something that their soul has wanted them to heal. Mm. It's beautiful. It's like stripping away the constructs. Right. You know, again, it's like we all come into this earthly existence and then we get piled on. I always think of it as a sculpture that's kind of sitting in wait underneath a big chunk of clay or marble that gets piled on with all the layers and all the societal constructs and indoctrinations and lessons and brainwashing and societal pressures. And then when those things get stripped away and suddenly our little life checkbox gets blown up, it gives the impression of being really dark and really scary and really horrible and really um, untenable. And yet, if you can go in there, you find really the biggest part of yourself. And we can speak from experience. It's true. It's yeah. hard. It sucks. And it's true. Right? Yep. So before we go forward, I want to just invite anybody who'd like to join us to call and join the conversation. If you have any stories about your lessons that you've learned or haven't learned through COVID, because there's plenty I haven't learned yet that I'd like to. Um, the number is 816-251-3555. Please call and join us. We'd like to hear from you. Um, let's talk about one that's that's definitely been given plenty of uh, plenty of I don't want to say lip service, but definitely some play for a long time now, which is the idea of separation, the lack of human touch, the lack of affection, the lack of um, the, the, the forced space, the idea of distancing ourselves from other humans and feeling like we can't approach, we can't shake hands, we can't hug. Um, that's a basic primal human need. 
separate from if it's somebody obviously that's in your bubble that you're living with, we've all been deprived of that in one way, big or small. Right. We've come at, become a fist bump nation. <laughs> I'm so not a fist bump person or a high fiver. So not my thing. Well, when I've tried to put my hand out, not recently, but before the Omni took the Omni took place, people would grab their hand back mm -hmm. and do a fist bump. And I go, that's cool. No, mm -hmm. not a problem. Mm -hmm. Because we're very frightened now, like germophobics, of exchanging bacteria with one another. When really what it's about a pretty healthy thing? thing. Like one of my clients who's 36, who I was talking to at the beginning of COVID, and then further on said, I don't know how to date anymore. Mm -hmm. You can't kiss anybody anymore. Right. You cannot make out, make out, that's out. <laughs> what am I going to do? Right. Help me. I do know, I know actually a good amount of people that have what they call like the, you know, their COVID relationships that have lasted like beautiful, hearty relationships that have, um, that started in COVID. Um, I marveled at it when I was a little more fearful, like, yeah, what do you do and how do you navigate even now? Yeah. Like with, you know, if I'm in, with my dating life or attempt at dating life, you know, what are the rules? What are the, um, there's politics around it. Sometimes there've been situations where I said one thing and it alienated somebody I didn't even know. Right. Um, just by telling them what my concerns were, right. um, or, but I do know people that kind of just like walk through it. They either were a little more cavalier and didn't care and took their chances, right. or they were really prudent. They would have their dates at the end of a driveway with distance between them. And then if they realized that there was some investment they wanted to make, they would get tested. And then finally mm -hmm. they would just, you know, let it all rip. And then they, and they've been in relationships ever since. Yeah. Um, but I think that, and that's the other thing too, you know, as a single person, like I know people, that was, you know, that was a big deal, like to have a few people in my life that I could hug every once in a while. Because, you know, I heard this all the time, people that would go months and months without even a hug. Um, and also then the other side of it is, you know, romantic, single people romanticizing people that had partners in their or family members or roommates or whatever living in their space where it wasn't always warrant a, warranting of um, romanticizing, right? Where a lot of relationships got very honest and truthful and things, their, their, their issues got magnified and they found out that they weren't meant to be together. And it wasn't always so copacetic. Well, you know, if you could look through blinds, right, exactly. What you might see is a <laughs> war going on, yeah. right? Yeah. With yeah. bullets passing overhead. <laughs> I am with you for two years and I can't mm -hmm. leave. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. Um, so all that happened too. The grass is always greener, right? Yeah, right. Some people would say they wanted, you know, or were forced to have all this time together. I wish I had the freedom to not be sharing space with somebody or let me go live in the back house or whatever it might be. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, it's interesting. But what can we learn from that, from that piece, do you think? What can we learn from what specifically? From this whole piece, just this piece about the um, the idea of relationship, of um, having to be alone or valuing the fact that you some people learn to deepen the value of the person or people that were in their life, right? Some people, um, again, discovered that they weren't meant to be together. I'm just, what can we take away I mean, from for that? me, um, I think one thing to learn is that everything is an opportunity. Everything is an opportunity wherever you are, moment by moment, and you assess it based on the fact that life is for you rather than against you. So if life is for you and you find yourself in very sticky situations, there's a lot of meat on the bone there for communication, for inner work, for trying to actually get closer. Um, everything is an opportunity. Mm. You do always say that. I, I do. Information. Stick it with it. All right. Let's take a caller, shall we? We can. Hi, caller. Are you there? I'm here. Yeah. Hi. Hi. What's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, this is Jan and I'm calling from LA. Hi. Uh, welcome, Jan. You may have just answered my question. 
Oh. Um, he may have, but uh, maybe uh, maybe um, he could go a little deeper because I'm wondering what is the spiritual understanding of the of natural events like this? Um, because I think COVID is a natural event, you know, whether mm. it's a virus or an earthquake or a flood. Um, could you go in a little more of spiritually what that would be? Yeah, of Great. course. Great it is question. a good question, an important one. I'd say, first of all, that I think it's valuable to come from a place where you're um, asking that question and just, you know, willing to look at things that can um, appear to be very devastating from a different perspective. You know, I think that number one, just to mm -hmm. honor that and recognize that you're, you're made of that kind of material in and of itself is spiritual, you know. Um, right. And I think, yeah, we did start to kind of um, talk about this a little bit, but we can go deeper. I mean, I... <clears throat> I question myself with this all the time because my lens can be, I was just having this conversation actually with a colleague about an hour ago, um, the bigger picture, we're talking about vaccines and COVID and all this and politics and divisiveness. Um, but I do think that there always is a much higher power at play that's way bigger than us, that is benevolent, that's just, um, and, and that means well. And that is my baseline belief system. Now, there's, it's often not in my heart, in my body, and often it's just in my head, and I have to remember and convince myself. So it's certainly not something that I embody all the time. But I do believe it as my foundational belief system, so that helps. That said, you know, when people are going through deep pain, and there's been so many versions of it, we haven't even talked about the bigger, like, newsworthy pieces and what it's caused in terms of racial, and um, not cause racial inequity, but just how it's actually... Um, magnified that with George Floyd and Black Lives Matter, for example, and just the amount of like literal burning of streets and looting and just all kinds of horrible things that happen in this country alone, let alone everywhere else. Um, I feel a lot of deep pain for that. So I think there's different layers. I think we have to kind of feel the emotions and grieve and have our human reactions. And then I think it's helpful to look at things from a bigger perspective. And I firmly believe that everything happens, like Steve just said, for us and not against us to teach us lessons. And the things that we're pointing out today, I think are some examples of why COVID happened, to remind us that we're all the same, to remind us of our interdependent um, dependency, and I'm not saying we've done a good job, but it's asked us to look at all this and it's tested us. I'm not sure that we've succeeded. Sometimes I think we're going in the opposite direction, but it's caused us to look at consumerism, our relationship with our material um, identities and our relationships and how we spend our time and being versus doing and um, you know, some of the things that we're noting here. So that would be my beginning of my answer. I like your answer, Callie. Beautiful includes a lot of beautiful things. So I can take a stab at this uh, from another, uh, even a different level. And if you, we just start with us, with human beings, when human beings neglect things inside of them over a period of time, what tends to happen is the things that have been neglected feelings that have been neglected, pain that's been neglected, these things come back to us often as nightmares. They come back to us as physical problems, psychosomatic problems. They can come back to us as diseases. They can come back to us as accidents. And so where I want to start with this is that when we neglect things, all of the universe wants to be whole. And so that wholeness pushes us to keep facing it in one way or another. If we can't face it consciously, we're going to face it through an accident or we're going to face it through a disease. So if you take that a little bit wider, what we don't face as a culture comes back to us because we've neglected it. We have neglected mother nature. Mother nature is something that needs to be honored and we've neglected it from the beginning of the industrial revolution and more and more through time, through pollution, the pollution of oceans and all of that. And because we've neglected it, 
it comes back to remind us <laughs> that there's something missing here. How is it going to remind us? It has to wake us up. We sleep very deeply. And when you sleep very deeply, it has to remind you in big ways. So it can remind us in terms of floods, earthquakes, the virus. Wake up. <coughs> There's something out of balance. And then the question is, who's going to wake up and who's going to remain asleep? And so I've seen the virus as one of these wake up calls from Mother Nature that in as much as we are part of mother nature, the, the composition of the human body is from the earth, the elements of the earth, we're one with mother nature. And so mother nature is reminding us, let's get back to harmony. Let's get back to oneness. Take a look at what you're doing. How are you going to go forward? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> so, <laughs> So this is the way that, from a spiritual perspective, one other thing, much of the indigenous population, I'm going to talk about the Native Americans, they see the earth as, I was reading this wonderful article by a Native American, and he said that the barrier reef in Australia was actually the liver of the universe. And it was wow. the way that the universe detoxifies itself. Mm, and that's and your so anger, you, it livers your anger organ. Right? And so if you start looking at things that way, you realize that this whole earth is part of our experience and we're coming and going and transferring atoms and molecules. All of this is a oneness. So to conclude my <laughs> speech here, I really got into it, right? This might be my favorite of your speeches ever. For okay. Real. For, real. For real. So to conclude this, what I'm saying is this desire for life to be whole is the reason that we've been going through all of these things, and certainly in the last few years. And it is imperative for us to begin to see things in this kind of holistic view or else we're going to, I'm not going to say perish, but we're going to be faced with more and more things that we've neglected and they're going to be extremely profound and more intense. My speech is concluded. <laughs> I rest your case, Your Honor. No, it's really, does that, can, does that resonate, Jen? Sorry, you're giggling. I imagine that was pretty profound to hear. <laughs> totally, totally. Totally. Thank you. Steve. Yeah. Thank you. thank you. Thank you so much for calling. And I'm glad oh, that you, you elicited thank such a beautiful answer from Steve. So thank you for that. Um, I think before we take our next caller, which we can probably squeeze in before we get to our action steps, I think it's important also um, that what you just described so beautifully as the, like the really the ultimate spiritual explanation for when things look hard and difficult and challenging down here on down here over here on earth. Um, is that that's a, that's a micro version, I'm sorry, that's the macro version of what you often talk about with the micro, which is that anything that comes up in our lives at any given time, COVID or no COVID, that is difficult and challenging is always there for a greater good and always there to catalyze some version of change or attention or for us to get back into balance and to give love to the shadowy parts of us that we don't want to look at. And so what you just described is really just the greatest example of a collective macro version of that, really. Yep. Right? That was somehow, amazing. somehow it took me over. It wanted to be said today. Well, that's it, because you just channeled that. That, yeah. that was you channeling. All right, let's take another caller. We can get another call in before the end of our show. Caller, are you there? Hello? Do have, hi, do we have hey. our caller on the line? Um, is this me? Yes, it's you. Hi, you. What's your oh, name and where are you calling from? I, well, I We've only it. got a few more minutes. Okay, sure. Uh, my name's Nikki and I'm calling from San Diego. Hi, Nikki. Um, thank you so much. Hi. I, I was just going to address the dating, uh, which I had done last year and tried really hard during COVID. And mm. I was, you know, just all of that 
too. Like everybody was in their bubble and I'm a widow and I was single and alone. I'm like, my bubble is me. And I found that really hard, that disparity. And then I found it really hard to date, but I, I did anyway. You know, I was out in parks and I was places, but it was all very difficult and confusing. And I was wearing a mask and I didn't get asked back. It was just, yeah, it was really hard. And You have uh, to put lipstick on. It's like a whole thing. <laughs> I found the best 24-hour lipstick. It will not come off. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you. I just, because I relate. Go ahead. Please uh, please continue. No, it was very important. <laughs> so anyway, um, and then, you know, just think everything is just the, the no touch and, and hugging and all that. But just the idea that I, like you're, you were saying a friend or someone had said, how would you ever... Well, I also thought, sorry, tangent, I thought that, oh, maybe this will be good, like in the olden days where you can't, you know, physically get together mm-hmm. so you spend the time and you get to know yep. each other. But it, it didn't quite. It was like it also was so hard that you couldn't even be next to each other. So, you know, or, or it, it was it, it, it was this weird distance. It was very awkward. And um, and then the idea of, like, ever kissing someone, I thought, how do, are people kissing? Like, will I ever want to kiss someone again? Because it's just all you think of is bacteria. But anyways, I found it really hard. I did keep doing it. And another story that I did um, meet someone this in, in a couple months ago. So that's a great miracle. Oh, but good. Very confusing and very hard. And I'm very grateful now that I'm not in my own bubble all by myself. But really challenging. So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. To- total points totally taken. And that was a really, um, that was a good, uh, an extra perspective that you brought up was because I related to that too. This could be the most romantic thing ever, especially if you're made of a certain, you know, material like I am, which is not, you know, quick, hasty dating type of person. Right. I really like to get to know the essence of people without that intentional pressure of checking the like dating boxes and a certain timeline. Um, yeah. which is why most of my boyfriends have all come from like friendships or work relationships that I've had or things where it was unintentional where you got that connection going for a long mm-hmm. time. So I relate to that. But um, most importantly, you gave it a try and perhaps that was your preview and opened you up to what you're enjoying now. So good on you and thank you for yep. sharing that. Yeah. We hope it continues you. for you. Nothing important, but it was really, yeah, two years of challenge, you know, and make it, made it harder. But anyway... Thank you so much, you uh, Yeah, congratulations. Thanks for calling. <clears throat> um, that's nice, too. Sometimes, you know, just the idea that during, like, harder times, it kind of uh, sharpens our toolbox. And then Absolutely. suddenly things get easier, right? So um, we'll get to our action steps momentarily. Maybe we'll just blaze through a few of these other things, even though we can't give them the same amount of time that we did some of the ones earlier today. Um, but just some of the things that we ask you to sort of contemplate and think about in terms of what your experience has been over these last two years in different um, different areas of your life. Um, let's see. Um, the idea of inspiration. Did you get inspired? I've struggled with lack of inspiration for a really long time on certain levels. Um, that's something that I got to dig more deeply into. But while I fancied myself wanting to take up this and that, and I went to an art store and I bought painting supplies and I love to bake and I used to make candles and soap and all kinds of things, totally lacking in, in inspiration, except for like my, my, my desires got way, my list got way smaller and it's still very consistent, but it wasn't about taking on new art forms like you did, for example. Well, you know, in initially when I lost my studio space. I didn't know what I was going to do because I didn't have the room at home to do large canvases. And then some friend of mine who's an artist said, why don't you take up watercolors Mm. and do them on small pieces? And that, that was the beginning of my watercolor journey, which Callie knows. And it's kind of taking me into new universes. It is literally. And I highly recommend you check out Steve's website, stevehassenberg.com, where he has some of his pieces and he's wildly talented. And the new stuff is true transmissions and transporting. And I guess I should let you say the rest and then when you're ready to talk about it, but very beautiful work. Um, So our action steps today have to do with just sort of sitting with all of these different ways that COVID has impacted us. Um, So step number one or action step number one, do you feel like you've learned anything? And if so, simply write it down and recognize it. Have you started to change the way you live your life? Have you 
learn something about yourself that you didn't know? Is there something that got excavated about your personality or mirrored back to you from your loved ones that you weren't aware of? Whatever it may be, just simply take note of it. Secondly, what's the biggest change that you want to make that you haven't implemented? Um, you know, again, it could be that you've witnessed other people making changes and th they just haven't come to you yet, or you haven't committed to them yet, but perhaps there's something new that you want to take on that you haven't. Um, it might, or maybe it's something that you want to undo that you haven't done before or part of you that, um, that you want to kind of let go of that doesn't serve you anymore. It could be a relationship that you want to let go of that maybe you've been forcing that, that certainly isn't showing up in the way that you need it to. Um, and then finally, take a look at the perspective you have on your life right now. Have you become more hopeful or more despondent? That's something that a lot of people can relate to. Some people feel more hopeful having moved through these last two years. Other people are feeling deeper despair as if things are getting worse. So just check yourself on that. No right or wrong answers. Um, and to that point, have you find yourself uh, assuming like healthier, more destructive habits? Some people have stopped more of their destructive habits and other people are taking more of them on. So again, just write a checklist to yourself, write your negative and your positive changes that you've made so you can give them a little bit more attention. So just to repeat, number one, do you feel like you've learned anything? And if so, write it down and recognize it. Number two, what's the biggest change that you want to make that you haven't yet implemented? And number three, take a look at your perspective on your life now, your feelings toward mankind, the planet, your, per your life, your, your life specifically, um, your habits. Have you assumed healthier, more destructive habits, more healthier, destructive thought patterns? With that, we want to thank you all for joining us. Please find us on Unity Online Radio Podcast. You can find us on Instagram at One Soul Radio and Facebook at One Soul Radio Podcast. We love to hear from you. We welcome your suggested topics or any questions that you want to ask us. And we will see you right here, same time, same place next week. Have a good I'll week. See you everybody. next week, Kelly. See you next week. <laughs>